But if you have a good attitude and you maybe don't have the palate, you can always sort of adjust. So much so to an unhealthy point. <laughs> Never <But> unhealthy. <laughs> G'day guys, Ryde here, your Chief Espresso Officer. I'm here for coffee chats with our next guest, Zoe Fraser, who's our expert barista in-house. And we're here to talk today about one particular subject that we all probably have an idea of, what makes a perfect barista? So welcome, Zoe. Thanks for Glad joining be us here. here. Yeah. Before we get into it, we'll preface that we're talking about a commercial barista as opposed mm -hmm. to a home, home barista, barista, I think, okay. or like a competitor, because I think they're probably going to have different aspects of it. Like a mm -hmm. competitor probably isn't focused on customer service or anything like that, but still has to put on a performance. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your home barista who is only focused on getting a perfect espresso and you're not, yeah. you don't care about customer service at all or yeah. speed or anything like that. So we'll, we'll preface it by saying, in your experience of hiring and firing people, what would you look for? You got someone coming in to yeah. trial out on the machine. What would you look for to see, okay, yeah, that person has the essence of a great barista? It's a difficult question because I've worked with a lot of different people in this field and that's people who have no experience at all and people who have more experience than me. And I guess if you want to talk about across any range of experience what makes a great barista, then yeah, definitely attitude. Yeah. I think palette is something that like you either have it or you don't. And yeah. that helps with attitude then as well. Like if you're coming in and you're interested in learning and you have a good palette to go with it, you're always going to do well. But if you have a good attitude and you maybe don't have the palette, you can always sort of adjust. You can learn and be better. Like when I started, I'd never tasted espresso before, but getting in and giving it your best shot and like trying the things that are hard and maybe people aren't interested in doing really makes a lot of a difference. Yeah, do you think that like, if you don't drink espresso, like straight black coffee, if you only have cappuccinos and you have additives in there, so sugars mm. or caramel mm -hmm. syrups and things like that, that it's gonna be really hard to get. Can you just follow the recipe and be nice to customers and just follow a strict recipe and hope to heck that it tastes great at their end? Or yeah. do you think that they have to go, right, even if you're not there yet, every day you should be tasting a, you know, at least a coffee before you serve the first one so yeah. that you know, okay, that's what it tastes like as a black coffee. Yeah. Well, I think that this then draws to how we have it set up in our cafe, which is each week I'm tasting the espresso. I set a recipe and then we have the other baristas yeah. work towards that recipe. Yeah. And it makes a difference each day if you do taste it but it's not such a significant difference that it's really going to trickle down to affect the customers yeah like for us if we only tasted once a month that recipe would be so completely wrong yeah. where i'm tasting it at least the espresso is at least once a week and updating those recipes to make sure they're followed through. But then on top of that, we each taste it every single day, multiple times in a yeah. day. Um, so much so to an unhealthy point. <laughs> it's never but unhealthy. It's, <laughs> um, like it's not as though we aren't tasting yeah. the product. I yeah. think if, if, if people came in and none of us working had tasted the coffee at all today, I think that would be a problem. Yeah. I would, if, anyone if I came in at any point and no one had had a coffee during the day I would be really mad because you need to at least be on top of it in some way yeah. shape or form if you have a regular coffee every single day then you know what you want your product to taste like yeah while we're not tasting the espresso every single day we're all tasting it every single day yeah. at the end of it all like when you look at holistically I think tasting espressos is a useful tool for a barista but not entirely necessary mm. every day. And what do you think is more important then? Like, are we focused on getting that recipe, hitting those numbers exactly right? Mm. You've got a double science degree, so you've got the understanding of the science behind it, right? So mm. you've come into it with a understanding of the science. How much weight do you add because I, I came into it from the opposite, completely mm. opposite. No science background, mm. just what I'd learned in school and then what I've taught myself over the years, but pure artistic, as yeah. subjective as coffee is, because I know for you know the older generations, they don't like this style of coffee. Mm. They aren't 
as you know accustomed to having a lighter smoother more nuanced coffee they want that kick in the face yeah they want the bitter full-on you know they would prefer robusta yeah. species over arabica all the time and they you know so it shows that it is subjective and so when you get to a certain level like any art you know you're talking about artists you cannot compare a van gogh to a picasso like they're both brilliant artists not mm. one is better than the other i might like van gogh more than picasso or the other way around but they're both at a level where you can't say oh yeah this is a you know a year five drawing and mm. then this is a master artist yeah i think that well that's why we love pushing people using coffee at home it's like you should be doing it and you should be having it how you enjoy it and for me how that transfers into a practical sense is that we have brew recipes which we work towards and during a day like the equipment isn't so reliable that we stick to that recipe through yeah. the whole day and coming from a science background it became really tricky to unlearn that like if it doesn't completely fit into that yeah. recipe then it's still fine to use yeah. and that for me came after years of experience and tasting and understanding that like while it's not sticking to the brew recipe, it depends on how you use it. Mm. So if we are making a black coffee, there's certain parameters which you still need to stay within because that's such a nuanced flavor. Yeah. Where if you are having your, you know, like cap with three sugars, it doesn't make yeah. as much of a difference at the end of it because it's also what you're looking to get from the coffee. Yeah. Like if you're drinking a black coffee, it's so much more forward that if you've got any unsatisfa unsatisfactory flavors, you're immediately going to be able to tell. Yeah. So absolutely. for us, it's about um, experience on the floor and just making judgment calls. Yeah. And that's another aspect of a great barista yeah. as well, being able to recognize that. And yeah. Yeah, from my background, hard to get through. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to see them in the as the diamond in the rough and mm. go, all right, we can just polish this. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes you do get somebody who just seems on the surface level like they would be perfect, and then you get them in and then under pressure they crack or they make those bad judgment calls and things happen, and you go, well, all right, so that what we saw there in the early stages didn't, didn't grow or didn't develop and so then you go okay well maybe that person's not as um as the diamond in the rough as you thought they yeah. were what would you say to someone who wants to get into the industry like is a yeah you, and like a, you know maybe they've they enjoy drinking coffee maybe they have cappuccinos they want to get into they want to become a professional what do you think you know how would you go into a cafe or you know because it's pretty hard to get experience and to become a barista because they want baristas with experience yeah and so there's this loop that i i notice you know with people applying for jobs all the time they're like the biggest problem is they want to get experience no one will give them experience because they only want to hire experienced baristas and it's like yeah. how do you break into that mold well for me because when i started i was a, a hire straight out of uni struggling to get a job in science I, coming from a background with no experience in hospitality at the age that I was, what I was 22 at that point, I'm going to preferentially hire people who are in a similar position. So without experience, it's almost easier to train for us in specialty coffee because it means you don't have any hurdles of people training you wrong mm. before you got here. Yeah. Like there's a lot of misinformation yeah. in coffee particularly in the cafe industry, because there's obviously a preference for if you're in a cafe, they're going to prioritize fruit, fruit yeah. quality food and yeah. quality coffee. Like I'm sure everyone's been somewhere where they've had fantastic food, but yeah. shitty ass coffee. <laughs> and so like, I enjoy hiring people with no experience because as long as they've got that great attitude to come into it, it's really easy to learn. Mm. Like. It becomes a matter of you've got your theoretical and your practical. The theory is quite easy to pick up over time. Um, the practical is a bit harder. So working in a flow when we get into mm. such high volumes yes. is, is difficult. Everyone's yep. been into a cafe and had to wait 20 minutes, yep. like especially in some of the busier seasons. Yep. And understanding time management and like multitasking and stuff like that is more yeah. the harder thing to to teach but it's something that again you gain over time so for me when i look at staff and how you know i mean you can never know that they're going to be great yeah. 
You can hire. You can hire. <laughs> when I am looking for someone, it's always about attitude first mm. because you can't come at it as well. You can be experienced, but you can't come at it as a bit of like a snob. Yeah. Either. You want to. I, I'm not snobby about coffee at all, but I love a great coffee. Yes, and so yeah. I'm trying to look for other people who are like-minded. Yeah, and I think that's a big, a great point because you can have someone who's a fantastic barista. I, I didn't have this personal experience, but one of the baristas that I hired uh, a couple of years ago had this experience applying for another job in another well-known roastery, and I'm not going to say the names, but they went in there to apply for the job. They put their resume in. And they were like, you yeah, know, while I'm here, I'm gonna have a flat white. And um, they wanted to have theirs a double ristretto flat white. For those of you who don't know what a double ristretto is, it's a double shot, but you're cutting it shorter. So it just gives it a bit more of an intensity and body without having as much caffeine. It's probably still a similar amount, but it's not as much. He went in there, ordered this coffee. They went, the barista behind the bar went, no, I, I'm not giving you that coffee. Um, and, and you know, our coffee is only designed to be done in a single shot, no ristretto. Um, so you can right. have a double shot flat white, but you can't have a double ristretto flat white. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, I, I understand. You know, you know, you've got that guide, and that's what you've created for that particular coffee, that recipe for that coffee. However, I really like double ristrettos and mm. flat whites." that's what I want to drink. Yeah. And they flat out refused. Yeah. So this bits, this is a bit of a fun one, actually. This is something that Liam earlier was mentioning, is that something that he believes makes a good barista is being a bit of a yes man. Mm. Like any anything that you come up against, just find a way to come around it. Yeah. And I've worked with a lot of people who specifically have worked in kitchens who have that mentality. When you're working in dinner service, it's always just like a yes, let's mm. move forward, sort of improv in a sense. But I can sort of see where they're coming from. If I didn't have a recipe for something and I was still in that mindset of like, I need to work within my parameters, it would put me under a lot of strain mm. to do a double ristretto when it's not something that we have a, like a program for, yeah. essentially. But at the end of the day, you can always do something. And so it's bordering on that snobbiness to say no yeah and you're making it an intimidating yeah that's right an intim intimidating thing to do by yeah. refusing and yeah. so it's about like being an accepting place is going to make coffee more accessible yeah it's going to make it more mainstream and sort of de-vilify it yeah i, I totally agree yeah. because my philosophy has always been the perfect coffee is the way that you like to drink it so yeah. there's no because it's so subjective we know that there are parameters to make it great tasting. We understand that you can get more out of a coffee and it tastes better. It doesn't have to taste bitter. It doesn't have to taste like dirty dishwater. <laughs> you can have all of those things without additives, milk, sugar, syrups, and still get a great result. However, it's like if you want to take that Wagyu steak, burn it oh. to crisp because that's the way you want to eat it, go do it. But don't expect... Don't come back and go, that was a horrible Wagyu and yeah. blame the Wagyu or blame, blame the person who cooked it or anything yeah. like that. That's on you. Like after that point, and that's what I would suggest to anyone who, um, you know, came up against that situation where they, oh, we've had customers, I, I know there's a customer that comes in and goes, I want something that you've never made before. Give me a surprise. And it's a really frustrating thing, I think, for a barista to have someone come in and do that. It's, as fun as that yeah. sounds, like, oh, yeah, just make something up. It's actually a lot of work because we just want to make the coffee that we make for you. So a cappuccino with two sugars, uh, triple shots, double ristrettos, whatever it is, we'll make it. If you come in and say, give us anything, and you don't just want us to make you a cappuccino, mm -hmm. it gets really hard. And But, you know, with this one lady we would just give her some gingerbread syrup, some half soy, half f full cream, um, put in one shot of decaf, two shots of something else, a bit of cinnamon, just to make it, it's horrible. We're not even calling it coffee anymore, but yeah. that is what she wanted. Yeah. It was soul destroying 
for the baristas <laughs> to have to make that because it's like this is not what we're about see i don't mind that so much as long you as there's that. not too much pressure <laughs> to really make something you've never had before that's what stresses me out it's like there's only so many things yeah. you can make that's like, right before you start adding in like yeah before you've just got yeah. 50 grams of sugar in that yeah. bad boy and but, a bit of uh, like um, coca-cola in there as well just yeah. to make it completely i different. think it's really interesting sort of the way we've segued into this because for me i i do really appreciate openness so like there's the people who want robusta like we were sort of talking about earlier there's you've got this way that you're accommodated to drinking coffee like that's how you know it to be done yeah and we're happy to do that yeah but also there should always be an openness to trying something new like i would never have drunk a black coffee if not for just being open-minded to yeah. it like it's not something that i particularly enjoyed the first time i tried it but like coming back to it and revisiting it helped with me becoming a better barista, helped mm. with me appreciating coffee. And so I think having an openness is really important rather than just doing the same thing every single time it can almost be just a bit of a treat to try something yeah. different. Yeah, I think forcing yourself out of those comfort zones is actually a really important part of yeah. a barista because I, on the one hand, it's great when you try black coffees and you, you know, if that's what you end up drinking and that's all you drink, that's great. But you still have to recognize that 95% of the population are still drinking cappuccinos or lattes or you know, milk-based coffees. Yeah. You can't just go, this is perfect for this espresso mm -hmm. without milk and you know, that's how I like it, so that's how I'm making it. And then yeah. it tastes pretty average as a cappuccino. Like it, yeah. You have to be constantly trying. I was really lucky when I fell into coffee. I hated coffee. And I fell into it with the openness of, oh wow, coffee can taste great. I never knew this, and yeah. it can taste great in all of these different forms. So mm. I, I really appreciate coffee in every different style, with milk, without milk. Probably I stay away from soy milk because that's <laughs> not really. I, I did used to drink soy for a long yeah. time, and it just takes an adjustment a while for your palate to adjust. But Are you I'm talking not like all alternative milks. I uh, know, particularly soy, soy for yeah, me. Okay. Soy oat, I, I'm really comfortable drinking oat. Mm -hmm macadamia milk and then mm. obviously all this other sort ones which i haven't tried yet wouldn't recommend macadamia you wouldn't no not no for me. <laughs> it's, it's... it's each their own. yeah <laughs> but yeah that for me allowed me to make coffees because i would try every so i would go okay what does a coffee taste like with the sugar in it what does the coffee taste like without sugar in it what does it taste like with oat soy all of the yeah. different styles what does one you know what does a piccolo taste like so I try everything and I try to keep a really open mind to it. Mm. It is hard because we're now coming up with more ways to destroy coffee. I yeah. feel like we're now going into this full on tech area where we've got every single tech thing under the sun and it takes a lot of your time and it might look great for Instagram and it might look fantastic for all of your um, viral videos, but does it actually taste better? You know, like you, yeah. you, you've got these avocado lattes, you've got broccoli lattes, you've got oh, just a ton of different coffees mm -hmm. out there, which for me just feel like, all right, there's nothing wrong with just having a standard long black. Yeah. Like you don't have to have a um, carbonic macerated mixed in there with mangoes and sitting in the vat with a whole bunch of pineapple mangoes peaches to get this really super intense fruit bomb yeah you can just have a regular yeah coffee. i mean i think uh, the way i see it is that it doesn't need to taste particularly better but it should taste different yeah and it should taste so significantly different that anyone should be able to recognize it because it shouldn't just be for the people who have been drinking coffee yeah. and getting to know the nuances it's just like anyone should be able to walk in and try yeah. it and i think a lot of people are scared off by black coffees and especially if you're going for like our costa rican it's got a new form of processing and so being able to taste the difference there mm. should be something that we can give to any customer yeah and i i, I whether like they like it. it or not yeah, yeah. like but just to i mean it's to just try so something, something different. different yeah yeah absolutely I, just, I love the idea of trying different things well yeah i'm all for that yeah but i always have my regular coffee like yeah. i i'm i'm going to go and I'm, i'll go to different cafes i'll try different yeah. coffees like we shouldn't just be drinking our no, own coffees right. we should have a good idea of what's going on in the industry and stay up to date, but like at the same time, I'm still gonna have my cappuccino with half sugar in it. Like that's just how I enjoy my everyday. Yeah. But yeah. like, 
staying up to date is another really important thing. Well, good segue into Costa Rican coffee because I completely forgot to talk about this, but uh, today we're drinking Costa Rica coffee. It's a beautiful one from San Marco. It's natural honey washed, so it's a different style to your type of your straight naturals and your straight washed coffees. You've got this, call it, they call it a honey processing, which actually is referring to the stickiness of the mucilage around the seed. And so they let that sit on the seed for a while and dry out in the sun. And all of those sugars and the flavors from around that mucilage go penetrate into the seed and you get these really, really beautiful different flavors to what a wash coffee, which is, I think is what everyone probably drinks. If you didn't know it was natural, then it's most likely washed. Um, but that's a really clean, crisp, balanced sort of flavor. This is a lot more intense, fruity, really delicious. So if you want to jump on coffeebeansdelivered.com.au, you can purchase the Costa Rican there. It is absolutely fantastic. However, I would preface it, this is an advanced coffee drinker's coffee. You don't want to be trying to run this in on an Audi machine because you just won't get the benefits out of it. It might still taste good. It's a really fantastic coffee, but you want to have, you know, if you're still drinking your mainstream supermarket coffees, then this is not for you. But uh, good segue there anyway. <laughs> Final question. I want to know, would you hire someone, potentially make, because I've heard this actually has happened, could potentially make fantastic coffees, but doesn't drink it themselves? Um, no. 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 That was a, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I do, I, yeah, it's essentially it's hard, the question yeah. of, do I believe that someone can make a perfect coffee without having tasted yeah. it? No. Mm. And I think that also, again, it's about the idea of openness and willingness. If you're downright putting, yeah. uh, like, I will not drink coffee, boundary down, then like, no, a coffee yeah. shop's not for you. Yeah, okay. You gotta taste it. You gotta. Because <laughs> I've, I've never experienced it myself, and, and my thoughts are the same. I just can't see how you can mm. make coffee, because it isn't, it's not mathematics. Yeah. Pure, not pure mathematics. Um, but they're out there, people swear that, oh no, this person makes fantastic coffees. I can't go and prove it because yeah. they're out of my reach, but they say, yeah, you, this person makes fantastic coffees and they do not drink coffee. Yeah. I just can't see how. But... I guess, you know what, I'm just now thinking though, some of the girls don't drink coffee. Right. Like some of yeah. the girls we have working for us don't drink coffee. <laughs> don't say but that. they still drink beverages that right. we make, so they understand how to firm milk. And so for them, their role is not to do the coffee, but yeah. it's more to do the milk. Steam the milk. So right. that's why we have like multiple different levels in place yeah. where I'm tasting, someone yeah. else is dialing in, and then they're further down the line. Yeah. So I wouldn't hire someone based on the merit that they can make a perfect coffee if they're not drinking it. That would just never However, transition to the role yeah, of Yeah, that's actual, not yeah. to say that we wouldn't ever have yeah. someone hired who doesn't drink coffee. Yeah. You can still also be quite passionate about it. Like they're really passionate about the beans that we have. Mm. And, all the sort of different levels mm. of intricacy there are in coffee, but they just don't drink don't, it yeah. all the time as well. Yeah, yeah. Like some people, the caffeine really affects them and mm. they'll have a decaf yeah. or they'll do shots every now and then when they're feeling like it. But it's just not, it's not an expectation that every single person needs to drink coffee in our store every yeah. single day. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I think we've covered a lot there. So thank you for coming on Zoe. Thank you for and me. of course, if you enjoyed this content, please give it a like, subscribe and ask comments in the comment section below. Ask some questions in the comment section below because we do answer all of them where we can. And if you've got any questions for Zoe to follow up on those uh, that we've talked about today, please do so. But thanks again. I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your brew.